In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a great educational game called Bamboozle. And what makes it great, in my opinion, is it makes it easy for teachers or trainers or facilitators to create a fun educational game, and it's customizable. So you can customize it exactly to your curriculum or to the training that you would like to do. And Bamboozle really is designed to be a whole class activity or a whole group activity with the teacher or the instructor up front running the game and the students playing the game. As you can see here on their website, they have a list of some of the nice features. There are some featured games and basically a library of games, so you don't really have to prepare even in order to use Bamboozle. Let's say you do prepare for it. You create a game in Bamboozle with specific questions you'd like to ask your students. Every time you use that game that you've created, the students will experience it differently. So let's get started now learning how to create educational games with Bamboozle. So here at the top of the screen, I'm going to click Sign Up for Free in the upper right. In order to really use Bamboozle effectively, you do need to sign up for a free account. Once you've filled out the sign up form and clicked Sign Up Now, you'll get a message that says to check your email to click the link in order to verify your account. Now that I've done that, it wants me to sign into my account, click Sign In, and now my account with Bamboozle is set up. Before we make our own game, let me just quickly show you some of the featured games that they have here. Here's one called Big Bigger Biggest. I'm going to click on that one, and you can see there's a preview of the questions that go with this game. And if you want to, you can let the students see these before you even begin. If you want to, you can even show them the correct answers using this button here hide and show. Once you're ready to begin, just click play game and you get some instructions. Separate the students into teams. Teams take turns choosing random questions and then in their teams they try to figure out the right answer. They give you the right answer and you press the check button to make sure that they gave you the right answer. If the answer is correct, you click OK and they get points. If it's not, you press the oops button and they don't get the points. Next, you can see that there are three options for teams. You can have two teams, three teams, or four teams. I'm just going to go with three teams. And then you'll notice that there are two modes. You can do quiz mode, where honestly it takes a little bit of the fun out of it. There are just questions, no power-ups. And then classic mode, where there are questions and power-ups. And that's what I'm going to choose. So here's the game board. And let's say I'm the instructor or teacher, and I've put the students into three groups. It's team one's turn. They talk about it and they say, we'd like to choose question number 10. The River Nile is blank long in the world. Maybe they say longest and then you click check the longest. All right, they got it right. So I click OK and you'll notice that team one was awarded 15 points. That point total was set up earlier by the instructor or whoever created the game. Now it's on to team two. They select question number three. And look, this is a power-up, or in this case, a penalty. Other team wins 25 points. And then at this point, you could say that it's up to the teacher to decide who wins those points, or maybe it's up to team two. They can pick which team. So, let, so let's go with team three. Now it's team three's turn. They select number 12. It's a very serious problem we have. Let's try that. The most serious. Okay, got that wrong. So I click oops and now it's on to team one. So you get the idea. There are other power-ups that are part of the game. Give me a few seconds and I'll find more power-ups so that you can see what they are. So here's another example of a non-question square, just no points, it's basically skip your turn. Here's another one, lose 20 points. But those are some examples of special squares that there are in a lot of these games. So I'll click back. And at this point, you could review with the students and say, OK, which ones did we miss? What was the right answer in each case? And you could review it that way. So that's basically how playing Bamboozle works. Let's now create a game. So I just clicked here where it says My Games in the upper left corner. And I don't have any games at this point. I'll just click here, Create Game. What's your game called? This is going to be Spanish Infinitive Verbs. In addition to typing your title, you can also click Choose Image. And I'll just click on Spanish 2 and use that as my image. It's basically a banner 
Next, I give a description of this game. Now I click Create Game. At this point, the game exists, but I need to add questions to it. And just to make it so I don't have to type so much, I'm just going to type a Spanish verb on the left and an English translation of that on the right. Notice that you can select how many points the question is worth. If it's particularly hard, maybe up the value of that question. In this case, this is one of the easiest verbs to memorize. I'll make it only five points. And changing those points adds to some of the variety of the game and makes it, in my opinion, a little bit more fun. That not all questions are worth the exact same amount of points. Next, take a look. We can add photos or images that go with this particular question. Now, what if you don't have just the right image on your computer to go with the question that you're building? Look, there is an option to get beautiful free images. And it just links to Pixabay, which is a website for getting free images and royalty-free images. So I could just do a search for visit. So anyway, you could go to Pixabay to get some images, download them to your computer, and then upload them in to go with your questions. So I'm happy with this question. I'll just click Add Question. Now question one is done, it's down here, and I can move on to question two. Practicar, to practice, and then add question. Now notice, if you want to create a new question that's similar to an old question, all you have to do is go here, click this copy button, and it puts all of the information in. Now in this case, that doesn't help because I need to put in a completely new question. But in many cases, that will save you a lot of work. Speaking of work, that's kind of a hard question, so I'll make it worth 20, and then click Add Question. So from here, it's just repeating those steps over and over, adding questions and answers, maybe pictures, and points. Give me a minute to finish creating my game, and then I'll resume the video. All right, I think I've finished adding questions. I have 15 total questions. I'll click Close, and now here are my 15 questions. You can see them all listed here along with how many points they're worth. If I want to show what the answers are, I can click this button. If I want to edit one of these questions, all I have to do is click on it. You can see that practicar was capitalized and none of my other questions were capitalized, so I just fixed that. If I want to not just fix a question or answer, but actually add additional questions, look, here it is. I can just click Add Questions and add a few more questions. I'm just going to click close again to go back to my game preview. So now that this game is ready, in the future, whenever I want to play this game with my audience or my students, all I have to do is go to my Bamboozle account. And do notice that Bamboozle is spelled a little weird. It's got two A's there. That's important to know if you're going to be Googling it or just going to bamboozle.com. So let's say it's time to play the game. I just click on my games. I select the actual game I want to play with the audience. And then you could go into a study mode and you could use this to study with the class. So you could say, all right, audience, what does cantar mean? They say to sing and then you say, okay, that's correct. And so this is a nice study mode to maybe get ready for the actual game. But then when you're ready to play, just click play game. And from here, it's just like the demonstration that I showed earlier, pick the number of teams, Choose Classic. In most cases, that's what you'll want to do. Split the students up into teams. Team 1 picks their question, and then you as the teacher, once they give the answer, just click Check and decide whether their answer was wrong or right. I'm going to click Back just to show you one last thing that you need to know, and that is that each game has settings. So if you go to Settings, you can change the name of the game, the picture that goes with it, the description, you can also see that this is a public game. Other people will be able to find my game, perhaps, and play it. If I don't want that, I can switch it to be private. It's just for me and my students. I can click Update, and now it shows, when I go into Settings, that it is a private game. So those are important options to be aware of. Going back to my games, you can see I'm ready now to create a second game. So I find Bamboozle to be a fun and useful way to help an audience, a class, a group, to study content that they need to learn and to give them a chance to practice it. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it to be useful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media accounts like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribe button 
If you do, you'll be notified whenever I post another video, and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to support my channel, become a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll see a link to that in the description below. Music